Hello everybody. Today we're going to be talking about the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect is kind of interesting phenomenon that you see in sound waves and light waves and actually all types of waves. We're going to be talking about it from the point of view of sound in today's discussion though. So let me explain what we're seeing here. I've got this simulation paused so nothing is happening at the moment but the yellow area just represents a space. So on the vertical axis we've got distances marked off in meters 10, 20, 30 and so on and on the horizontal axis we again have distances marked off in increments of 10 meters. Right here at this location of negative 40 meters this blue circle represents a sound source and this sound source when we start the simulation will play a frequency, a tone with a 100 hertz uh, tone and so right over here this represents the frequency that will be emitted this green line represents our observer. That would be like an ear, or this is a person with an ear who's listening. And if we just let this thing play for a minute, um, what we should see is that these red circles start coming out and those represent the sound wave. And so this thing is emitting 100 cycles of sound per second and our observer is hearing 100 cycles of sound per second. Now let me pause this and reset it. And I want to no point out a couple of things. First, this first uh, red circle represents uh, the crest of the very first wave. This red circle represents the crest of the second wave that's emitted. So the distance between these circles represents the wavelength. And remember there's a fundamental relationship with all waves and that is that the speed is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. So when we start this thing playing and I'll pause it again here in just a second. Okay. Now notice that our observer hasn't really heard anything yet. Even though this is saying they're going to hear 100 hertz, they haven't heard anything yet because the sound has not yet reached them. But notice that the distance between the wave fronts is very consistent here and it produces this circle or this concentric ring pattern. And each one of these then, the distances between the red rings, that is uh, the, the wavelength. So the wavelength is the same in all directions out from our source. And so when we play this, now our observer is hearing the waves and it's receiving 100 waves per second, just the same as the source is sending those out. Now, I'm going to pause it again, but this time when I reset it, or after I reset it, I'm going to change it so that our object that's emitting the source will be moving toward the ear. So let's put this up and notice that uh, our numbers here, the source velocity says in units of speed of sound, sometimes you'll see that called a Mach number, M-A-C-H M -A -C -H is Mach. And so if something is traveling at Mach 1, that means it's 1 times the speed of sound. If something is traveling at Mach 2, that's 2 times the speed of sound. Well, I'm going to put this up so that our object is going to travel at Mach 2. And notice that our pattern has changed just a little bit. Let me pause it here. Since the object is moving forward, in the amount of time that it took this first sound source to be produced until the second sound source was being produced, our source had moved forward. So that the waves here in front are kind of getting compressed. And notice that the waves behind our sound source are being spread out. That means that our observer here, the green line, when it starts hearing the sound, it's hearing sound waves that have a shorter wavelength uh, than they were when the object was standing still. And remember, if the wavelength goes down, the frequency goes up. So our observer will actually be hearing a frequency of 125 hertz, even though the source is only emitting the sound at a rate of 100 hertz. So if we let that play, our observer is hearing a higher frequency than is being emitted. Now there will also be something interesting that you'll notice when our source passes the observer. Notice everything is all consistent right now. Source emitting 100, observer hearing 125. But right now, did you see what happened at the instant it passed? The source is still emitting the same sound that it always did, but now the observer is hearing a much lower frequency. They're hearing only 83 hertz because now that they're behind the moving source, those waves are now being spread apart. So you have a longer wavelength, a bigger wavelength, which means a smaller frequency. So the frequency was reduced. 
So the frequency that our observer is hearing depends upon not only the frequency that's being emitted, but on how fast that source is being that source is moving. So let me reset all this again and pause it. And I'm going to make our object move faster now. I'm going to make it move up here almost to the speed of sound, 0.9, Mach 9, 0.9, and pause it. Okay, notice again how these waves are being really compressed out in front of our moving object. So when they start being heard by our source here, they're going to be at a very high frequency. The source will now hear a frequency of 1000 Hz, even though they were only being emitted at a rate of 100. And when it passes, again, we have an enormous drop because now the waves are being spread out. Well, that's what the Doppler effect is. When the observer is hearing a different frequency than is being emitted because the source is moving. But notice it also will happen if, let's set everything back again, pause it again, and let's make not this time not our source move, but let's make our listener move. Let's make our observer move toward the source. And pause. Can you see that again? The observer was actually hearing a higher frequency than was being emitted because when he hit this first sound source and heard it, he was moving toward the, uh, the second one. And so it, he reached it in a shorter period of time than he did uh, when he was standing still. So the effect is it sounds as though that wavelength is shorter, which means the frequency that he hears is higher. So that's what the Doppler effect is. Now, let me show you one more thing. Let me reset this one more time. Pause everything. Make our observer stand still. Pause it. Make our observer's velocity zero. So they're standing still. And this time, let's make it so our source is traveling faster than the speed of sound. Let's put it up here at 1.2 and reset everything. OK. Can you see now how the waves are, he's actually passing them? And so we get this area where the sound waves are being all really compressed. What happens there in the real world is that all those sound waves are piling up and you end up with an area of really high pressure at that point. And so if we had an observer, say right down here where the cursor is now, when that front, this wave front passes this point right here, then the observer would hear all of those sound waves at the exact same time, and they would perceive that as a very loud boom. It sounds like an explosion. That's what a sonic boom is. So a sonic boom doesn't happen just at the point when the uh, airplane or whatever it is breaks the sound barrier. It happens when this, this front of all these compressed waves of some object that's moving faster than the speed of sound all reach an observer at the same time.